joking. Oh my God, Olivier just told me I've been blathering on and no one could hear me. <gasps> How do I even sum up what I've been talking about for the last five minutes? Let me sum it up by saying, oh, I can't believe it. <laughs> um, suffice to say, I can't see your comments right now. Um, okay, let me just, let me just get my head together. <laughs> All right, so what we're here today to do is to let go of upset and anger and resentment and fear. And as we come out of the pandemic, there's a lot of fear uh, that we need to release. And also, of course, with what's going on in the world with the, in Ukraine, as well as where there are other wars in the world like Somalia and Yemen and Afghanistan, we just need to let it all go. Now, why do we need to let it all go? Why do we need to let it all go? We need to let it all go because we're going to have the new moon tomorrow and that's when we are going to start to fill up with positive feelings okay so one thing to be really aware of in um, in moonology is that we do not spiritually bypass we do not uh, just go hi oh, la di da if I just think everything's okay everything's going to be okay you know I mean if you can really do that without having fear great good on you do it but if you secretly have fear about everything we've been through in the pandemic and now you're worried about this invasion of Ukraine on our doorstep or you're worried about the wars going on in other parts of the world or, you know, things like I mentioned yesterday in my radio show, human trafficking is still going on. And even if the situation in Ukraine finishes, the world is still far from perfect. And we all have issues and we have things going on. So at the dark moon, what we do is we release as much as we can ahead of the new lunar cycle we process it we write it down we burn it we release it okay so there's no spiritual bypassing going on this is where we do the hard work this is where the hard work starts so what do we need to do today what do we need for this ceremony today okay an open heart the microphone switched on <laughs> a desire to move on a pen and paper or just write in the comments a flame proof bowl and your breath okay all right so are we ready before I begin I just want to give you some context um, about the dark moon because some people will be attending this dark moon ceremony for the first time so uh, this is a depiction of, of the uh, lunar cycle and here we go so you can see, let me just see if I get the laser pointer. There it is there. So there's the new moon. We are not there yet, but let's start at the new moon, okay? We get the new moon tomorrow. Then we get the waxing crescent moon, which is when you, you, the moon suddenly becomes visible as a little crescent in the sky. Then we get the first quarter moon when the moon looks like a half moon. Then we get the gibbous moon or the waxing gibbous moon when the moon looks sort of three quarters full. You know when you look up at the sky and you go, it's not quite full? I remember before I really was into moonology, probably in my teen years, I'd look at it and I'd go, it's not quite full, is it? Well, that's when it's gibbous, ahead of the full moon, when it's a big, perfect round circle. And this, of course, is all to do with the shadow, the interplay of the shadows on um, of the sun on the moon. And then we get uh, the, whack, with the waning gibbous moon, or what I call dominating moon. Then we get the last quarter moon, which is, again, it looks like a half moon. So these two times, it looks like a half moon. And it's flipped depending on if you're the northern or the south. Then we then we get the uh, waxing, the waning crescent moon or the balsamic moon, okay, which is what which we're actually in the balsamic moon phase. But as I was saying when you couldn't hear me, they are that's what they teach you in astrology school. And I know well, what I was also saying was that. I'm a very by the book astrologer. I was given, you know, I was taught very early on, you have to do it properly. You can't just know a bit of astrology and go off in the world and start talking about it because you will damage the integrity of astrology. Um, I was told, given that message loudly and clearly by one of my first um, astrology teachers who put the fear of God into me of, you know, saying something ridiculous that would, um, that was incorrect. So uh, I do astrology by the book, but 
The one thing I do that's not in the astrology books that they don't teach you at astrology school is this ninth phase. The ninth phase is not something that's in astrology per se, although we're bringing it into astrology. Uh, one, one dark moon at a time. Um, in astrology school, they teach you about these eight phases of the moon, okay? Four, five, anyway, you get the idea, up to eight. This is the ninth phase they don't teach you about in astrology school, and it's basically wedged somewhere between the waxing, the sorry, the waning crescent, which is also known as the balsamic moon, put a B there for balsamic, between the balsamic moon and the new moon. Okay, it's between these two points, and it's where we are now. And it's a very mystical, mystical uh, time in the cycle. It's basically the time to release and let go. And of course we have to release and let go all the fear, all the dramas, all the resentments. And uh, it's really important that we deal with our feelings ahead of the new moon because the new moon tomorrow is gonna to be the start of a new lunar cycle. So we need to release all our stuff, okay? So, uh, and of course we need to release, still we've got fears from the pandemic that we're releasing as we emerge from the pandemic and now we've got these fears of what's going on in Ukraine with Putin invading, um, as well as all the other things that are going on in the world, you know, which I keep referring to because I want to make it really clear, you know, we can't live in la la land and act like if this is solved the world is perfect. The world won't be perfect. We've still got a lot of work to do. All right, so... The balsamic moon phase is where we find the mysterious ninth phase of the moon, also known as the dark moon. And this is a quote that I, I use pretty much every month. So it's from Demetra George in her amazing book, The Mysteries of the Dark Moon. The moon with its repeating cycles of waxing and waning became a symbol to the ancients for birth, that's the new moon, growth, that's the full moon, Death, that's where we are right now in the dark of the moon, because the moon's about to disappear in the skies. You can't see the new moon. And the renewal of life in all forms. Okay, I'm just going to read it again. The moon with its repeating cycles of waxing, getting bigger, and waning, getting smaller, became a symbol to the ancients for birth, growth, death, and renewal of all life forms. And so what happened as, as uh, over, the, over the years was that um, people associated the dark moon, which is where we are now, with death. Because the moon dies in a way, because all of a sudden you can't see her. You can't see the moon at the time of the new moon. She disappears, it's because of the angles and, and the sun and, and so on. But you cannot see the moon at new moon. The skies are dark. And to the ancients, this meant the moon had died and disappeared and it disturbed them. And, and then she was born again uh, at the time of the crescent moon when she re-emerges. And uh, over the years, what happened was um, all the things, so the moon was always, the dark moon was always considered a very healing time. And, uh, you know, thousands of years ago, healing was, was taken probably much more seriously than it is now, and it was very different. You know, now if you've got something wrong with you, you go to hospital, you get medications, you get injections, you get x-rays, all that kind of stuff. Back then, healing was a different thing, and healing could actually be there was more care taken over in, in a funny way over mental health. You know, when, when men came back from war, they were looked after by, by women who had healing skills to help them uh, renew after, after what they'd been through. And, um, and over the years, the patriarchy sort of came to twist all this sort of business that went hand in hand with the dark moon and the balsamic moon, the healing, the soothing, the death, you know. Um, sex was actually used for healing thousands of years ago. It's a bit random to mention that, but it is. I mean, if you read the Dan Brown's book, The Da Vinci Code, that's basically about, um, partly at least, about the goddess using sex for healing. Read the book again and read it with that in mind and you'll see it read a whole different book. And that's why that book was such a hit because 
the goddess was starting to emerge and that and that book was actually about the goddess and sex and healing which might seem really weird thing to say but anyway um so yes yeah, so the dark moon became quite um became feared as the dark goddess became feared the dark goddesses like lilith and nyx and kali became feared and and the patriarchy made this sort of um darkness a bad thing as if it's a bad thing and of course we know as uh as people who follow the moon and who follow it every month we know that there is actually nothing scary about this time of the month in fact this time of the month is the time where we we let the past die away we release the past and if we don't release the past then we get in trouble you know so that's what we're going to do today we're going to be releasing the past and letting it all go so the dark moon the ninth phase of the moon it's the time to release the last dregs of any upset any anger dramas anything negative left over from anything in your life which didn't work out as you might have liked at least at the time by emptying yourself of this you free up space to allow in the new when you do your new moon manifesting and also just because of what's going on in the world right now it's really really important that um that we release fear we've all had well maybe some of you haven't maybe some of you are those brave brave souls like my lovely friend sam channel who had no fear at all whatsoever through the pandemic i don't think um you know didn't get vaccinated if i'm allowed to say that i hope that's not a breach of confidentiality i think she's pretty open about it didn't get vaccinated didn't fear just decided everything was going to be fine and everything's been fine she's now living in a conscious community in <laughs> portugal um you know like some people were like that but a lot of people had a lot of fear i even know some people who chose not to get vaccinated but just basically stayed home for two years like hid themselves away i hid myself away there was a point in the pandemic where i didn't leave the house for a month you know and you know it's like well hang on yasmin aren't you supposed to be this enlightened person no i'm not i'm an astrologer it doesn't make me enlightened um although that said i actually managed to break through a lot of fear during the pandemic in the six months when i was doing the daily kali chant uh which really helped me deal with the fear but i had fear you know i had fear for my mom i haven't seen my mom for two and a half years every time i talk about it, i cry so i'll try not to now um you know i had fear i had fear around a lot of stuff in the pandemic and you know i'm still releasing that and this is the time for us to release it and one of the and also what's going on in the world right now there are still things going on in the world right now which are causing us fear you know and as i've been saying you know we need to stop doom scrolling it's okay to be informed but we need to not be like just looking at all the scary stuff all of the time um and you know the reason why i've got the chakra picture there is because fear lodges itself in our energetic system you know when we're scared it get the energy gets stuck fear basically blocks the movement of energy and uh and so what we really need to do is we need to uh release the energy so that we free up our energetic systems and this is one of the reasons why it's so wonderful that we do these sessions together because it's actually a way every month you know here i am in my office in london doing something that dates back thousands of years and we are just releasing releasing you know and that's what we're going to do now so one of the best ways to release is um is through chanting chanting really helps us to reset ourselves um energetically and i'm i work with kali at the dark moon uh i work with durga at the new moon i work with uh ganesha at the uh quarter moons i work with narayani at the full moon narayani being a triple goddess um and you know there's various goddesses for various phases of the moon the reason why i go to kali at this time is because kali is the destroyer goddess she's a very powerful goddess and she can help us destroy ignorance fear um resentment jealousy but you know especially fear is what we we really i need to release at the moment anyway <sighs> so we're going to do a chant to kali it's om kali ye namaha om kali ye namaha om kali ye namaha so i'm just going to chant it three times uh but there we are kali is the goddess of destruction and dissolution so let's just close our eyes 
and breathe. Breathe in through your nose. Hold and out through your mouth. Do it again with the intention of breathing out fear and stress. Breathe in. Hold and breathe out. Breathe in, hold and breathe out. All right, now let's all energetically hold hands with Kali, whose energy can go around our circle around the globe. And we chant to release fear and negativity, including all the negativity going on in Ukraine right now. Just dissolve it. Make it go away. And especially to dissolve fear in our hearts so that we can hold the light and be the light and spread the light. Om Kali Namaha. destroy and release all fear, all negativity, all power struggles. Breathe in, hold, breathe out. Breathe in, hold, out through your mouth. One more time, in through your nose, hold, breathe out fear. Just let it all go. Just pluck the fear out of your heart chakra. Just pluck it out. Just sit for one moment. Thank you, Carly, for helping us destroy fear. Destroy ignorance. Destroy egomania. Breathe in, hold, breathe out. So during the waning dark phase of the moon cycle where we are now, the fruit that's been left on the vine goes to seed, withers and decomposes. So just let it all go. So now what we're going to do is we're going to actually do the Ho Oponopono prayer together to forgive ourselves for anything we think we've done. All right? So say it with me. I'm just going to say it once. It's on the screen. It's right up there. Okay. First of all, we say it to ourselves. Say it together. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. I love you. I said we're going to say it once, we're going to say it twice. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. I love you. And I'm actually going to ask you to say it one more time. If you have a phone, get your phone and put it on selfie and now say it. I'll say it and then you repeat it, okay? Look at yourself as you ask yourself to forgive yourself for anything you think you've done or you haven't done or you should have done and you didn't do. Okay, here we go. I'll say it first, you repeat it to yourself in your camera. I'm sorry. 
Please forgive me. Thank you. I love you. And now just blow yourself a kiss. And now we're going to say it to the whole world, to anyone we need to forgive us, okay? Here we go. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. I love you. And again, I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. I love you. And now just say it to the world, even if you don't even know who you need forgiveness from. Someone you may have hurt without even knowing. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. I love you. Okay, we're just going to do a little bit more uh, breath work. Okay, are you ready? Breathe in. Hold. Breathe out anger. Breathe in. Hold. Breathe out stress. Breathe in, hold, breathe out fear, all right and now what I'm going to ask you to do is I'm going to ask you to write down something you are releasing and I need a piece of paper, okay I'm going to write it on this. Write down something that you're releasing. And I'm just trying to see if I've got my lighter here. I don't seem to have my lighter, but I'll burn it after. So I just write, I release. And then whatever you're releasing. And just know, I'm going to rip mine up. Just know that whatever you're releasing, I don't know about you, I know I may, I'm releasing a mistake that I think I made a few, quite a few years ago now, but I know I was doing my best. I'm just going to show you, I'm just putting this in here and I'm going to burn it after. And you can put yours in the comments or write it down and burn it in your kitchen sink if you don't have an outdoors. Um, and if you can't burn it, don't worry, I will burn it for you. I will burn it for you. So let me just see if I can um, see any comments. Gosh, there's 300 people here today. We've all got a lot of releasing to do, haven't we? That's the thing. Um, I'm gonna have to put a note for people <laughs> to say that they'll have to um, start five minutes in because I was on silent for the first five minutes. All right, 709 comments, okay. Okay, so it's what you're releasing, great. Oh my God, Al Alison Hamilton, I release fear of world events. That's a big one. That's a really big one. Oh, I love that. Gina, what self-awareness you have. The need to be right. Very good. Pauline, I release all that is not love. Mary Fox Cousins, I release all fear. Beth, I release business blockage. Beautiful. All right. So I hope you've all written them down. We're going to just do one, one more three breaths. So in through the nose, hold and then release negativity. Just negativity, full stop. Okay, we're going to do it three times and then and then we're going to do a little card for what for what we need to know. So breathe in, hold, expel it. Breathe in, gather it all up in your body as you breathe in, hold, and breathe it out with power. <laughs> 
Okay, you ready? Breathe it in, all into one ball. Hold. There we go. Being a bit lightheaded. You know, some people say to me, oh, Yasmin, you do, you, you're on, uh, some people who are kind of into marketing and stuff, they say, Yasmin, you know, you do all this free stuff all the time. You do too much. You're always doing free stuff, free stuff, free stuff. And I'm like, I'll say it, I've said it before and I'll say it again. I do this for myself as much as for, for you guys. I mean, the fact that you guys can benefit obviously is massive. But the fact, maybe it's 75% for you and 25% for me because I sit here and I do this once a month with you. So thank you for being here and giving me a reason to do this because it's at least 25% for me. So there you go. All right, so now we're just going to end with a um, card for, with, for advice on releasing. And I'm gonna use my, uh, I'm gonna use my, um, they're pictured are my Moonology Oracle cards. I'm actually going to use my uh, new cards, my Moonology Manifestation cards. Do you know I just got an idea for a new deck of cards during this ceremony? Probably should write it down. I have to present some ideas. I've got some ideas for uh, for Hay House. Yeah. There you go. All right. So if this card is for you, write in the comments, me. Or this card is for me or is it just for everybody who sees it I'm not really sure you decide this is what we need to know so this is what we need to know about releasing whatever ah okay make time for self-love <sighs> okay, interesting. So even though we're all so full of wanting to sell, send love to Ukraine and the people of Ukraine and the Russians who are involved that don't want to be involved, it's also, it's a reminder, it's like the old, I know this analogy gets used all the time, but it's such a good one. It's like the old thing on the plane. If you're traveling with a child and the cabin depressurizes and you have to put on a mask put your own mask on first so you can then help anyone else who needs it who's around you <sighs> all right so this is what we all need to know in terms of what we're releasing have you been trying to please all of the people all of the time when you still aren't quite best pleased yourself there's a difference between wanting to live positively Make sure you acknowledge your feelings. So I'm not sure if I was talking about this when I was on mute or not, but what I was saying at one point today was that what we do now at the, at the dark moon avoids spiritual bypassing. Because it's very, it's, it says here, you can't fool the universe. So pretending to be happy when you're sad will get you nowhere. Rather, you need to deal with your feelings. Okay, and that's exactly what we're doing here. So in a way, this card is an affirmation that we're doing the right thing, you know, because you have to deal with your feelings. So if you are like someone on there was saying, you know, I'm going to release fear about world events. So important to be aware. If you are scared by what's going on in the world right now, acknowledge it, you know, acknowledge it, love it and release it. Okay. So yeah, that's a pretty powerful message. If you like to work with crystals, if you want to do yourself a dark moon crystal grid or you just want to put a crystal in your bra for the day or in your purse or under your pillow, pyrite, which I've got on my desk here, blue kyanite, green turquoise, red tiger's eye, pink mangano calcite or sunstone. All right, so I guess that pretty much wraps up the proceedings for today's um, dark moon ceremony. We'll be doing the new moon one tomorrow. So the idea is that we empty out now. Before we finish, just put your hands over your heart and think of someone or something you are really grateful for. And then just to say, um, 
I think the Written in the Stars this month, gosh, I should know, shouldn't I? Let's see, it's going to be uh, Pisces, Aries, yeah. This month it's Taurus Rising, I think. If you're Taurus Rising, there's a special workshop for you. Uh, so tomorrow's the new moon, and then the day after is the Written in the Stars workshop for Taurus Rising. Um, all the details are on my events page. So thank you for being here. Thank you for helping me do this. Thank you to those of you who stuck around while I was on mute. <laughs> and uh, I'll see you soon.